Welcome to the second video in our three-part series where I'll share with you some suggestions to help you write a short story for the Lionel Bowen Young Writers Award. In our first video, I showed you how to create a detailed mind map on the theme of sustainability in a city for tomorrow. So by now, you'll have some of your best ideas already captured on a page. To write your short story about a city for tomorrow, Think about these three key elements first. I'm actually going to start off by talking about setting and world building, which is really important when you're writing about um, a city set in the future. The second element is to think about character and characters, because you're going to have a main character as well as one or two others in a short story. And then plot. What is actually going to happen in your story? So, to start off with, um, as I mentioned, world building is really important in writing a story. You want your reader to be really convinced about this future city of yours and be amazed by your original ideas. So you've already begun thinking of some of these ideas in your mind map, and now it's time to get a little bit more specific by drawing another map or cityscape. So this time, draw a map of your city and ask yourself the following questions. Does your city already exist? Is it gonna be Sydney, set in 50 years time? Or are you picturing a city that's set on another planet um, entirely, is it a completely new city? What's the population of your city? What's your city called? And in what year would it be set? I was thinking 2,345 would be a pretty cool year. What's the overarching design of your city? Is it circular or is it rectangular, layered or flat, or in the shape of a special symbol depending on who runs the city? What does a typical street look like? Describe or draw the buildings, and particularly what makes those buildings sustainable? What are the major locations and landmarks in your city? Imagine what the Opera House or the Harbour Bridge might be looking like in 150 years. What's the climate like? What are the natural features of the city? Will it be a harbour like Sydney or will you have lakes? Um, would there be a ring of mountains around your city? Um, any unusual plants or, or birds that we haven't discovered yet? And again, coming back to what kind of transport's running in your city and how's energy produced? So as you're drawing your map, you'll be starting to think about the key locations um, in your city and where these things are happening. And another important thing to think about um, for setting is what rules are going to govern this future city that might be different to those in our world. So as I mentioned before, maybe in our first video, maybe everyone's responsible for producing the energy they use. Um, is it a crime to use a plastic bag? Okay. So you'll have a pretty detailed map and with notes on it about this incredible city that you're designing. But to make a story work, you need some characters. So for a short story, you probably need one main character and a maximum of two characters will be adequate. So I often find it easier to think of a main character or to suggest to students to think about a main character that's quite similar to them or like you imagined in the future, or you could think of a character that's really inspired you from a book that you've read. Um, if you found drawing really helpful in imagining your city, you might find it helpful to draw a quick portrait or sketch of your main character to first spark your imagination and then ask yourself some questions. So sit your main character down and interview them. So what do I mean by that? I mean interview them. Ask them, what's your name? What's their age? What do they look like? Do they have a distinguishing feature? What clothes do they wear? And most importantly, are they made from sustainable materials? Where do they normally live? Who's in their family? What do families look like in the future? Are we living in the same structure or do we live in large groups and we live in small groups? What's the main thing they spend their days doing? Are they at school? Are they a student? Or are they got some incredible, important job? 
What's your main character really good at? What's their super skill? What are they scared of? What is really special about them? What's going to make your reader be really drawn to get to know your character and care what happens to them in this story? Do they speak in a particular way? What are the greetings like? What sort of greeting do they use in, in this future time? Is it may the force be with you? Or have you got a more original idea than that? One of the most important things to understand about your main character is what they want more than anything in the world. And that's going to help with your plotting and driving your story forward. With your other couple of characters, you're going to think about who does your main character meet and interact with along the way in this story. Are they a friend or are they an enemy? Are they one of each? Someone who's really helpful or someone who's actually putting up a lot of obstacles? Are there other intelligent species living in your future city, like robots or cyborgs or um, and they, do these other characters have special abilities or features? So take your time getting to know your characters before you write and you'll find it much easier to write the story. The final element you need to think about before you write your short story is what will the plot be or the main events? In a short story, it's generally better to write a simple plot rather than make it too complicated, especially when your city is going to be as detailed and extraordinary um, as you have thought of. So, however, if you're an experienced writer and you want more challenge, you can write a more complex plot by having more characters moving forwards and backwards in time with flashbacks or changing point of view. But for the purposes of today, I'm just going to be talking about a simple narrative, a simple plot. So the first place is to start, in the first place, start by brainstorming the kinds of events that might take place in your city for tomorrow. So there's some pretty typical kind of science fiction plots that we can kind of be inspired um, or borrow from. And I've just summarised a few ideas here that you have, might have far more interesting ones than these and more original ones. But, you know, one thing you might think about is does your main character time travel? Do they time travel from the present day into the future? Maybe um, there are problems with the robots in your city and they actually take charge or behave badly in some way. Does your main character develop some superpowers or discover a way that humans could live forever? Hopefully there isn't an alien invasion unless they're super friendly and um, able to add something positive. But of course, it's something you know that's been thought about for future um, science fiction stories. So once you've thought about generally what your plot idea might be, write down three different events or problems that your character faces in the story. Start with a smallish one, then a bigger one, and then a huge one. Okay, so not all writers plan their stories, but I have to say it is a helpful way to organise your ideas. If you plan your story, you, you, you run less risk of running out of ideas halfway through. Um, an easy way to write your story plan is to create a story mountain. And you could use a city map. So I've cheated here, I haven't drawn one. This is a map of Sydney. You could have your city map and you could be starting to think about using your map together with the planner to plot your story. So. Start by thinking about whether your story will begin in the present time or in the future. And will your character time travel? How do they do that? Do they do it through a portal or a time machine? And mark on your city map where your character starts in this story. So I'm going to start mine off in the Sydney Opera House in 100 years' time. My main character will start here. Um, and then I'm going to very carefully highlight a path from where my story starts to the, where my first problem might occur, which might be just out here, outside, outside the opera house. So once you know what that first problem is, it's easy to start filling in your story mountain. So if you sketch one of these out on a page, we know that in our introduction, we need to meet our main character in a setting doing something. Then they're going to travel to their first event. 
So I might have something like the light around the opera house or the lights inside the opera house start flickering. And that's some signal to me that something is going wrong, that it's actually, you know, somebody's about to reduce the power in the city or something like that. Maybe there's an invasion starting to happen. But just say the first event is a small problem where the lights start to flicker. I might meet another character along here um, who's actually going to join with me in trying to solve what, what's going on. Um, and maybe this is a total blackout in Sydney and then maybe this is the arrival of my kind of enemy or difficult character. There's a very big climactic event of an invasion or something really terrible that's gone, gone wrong. Um, and then I've got to work out how to solve that. And then we'll have our ending. Often our character changes in their journey through these events, these, these problems, um, through the process of working out how they're going to solve it. In saving, saving Sydney, I'm a different person. So maybe at this point I've started as a not very brave person and now I'm a hero. That's just a really kind of simple example of it. But what I want you to think about is perhaps in the story ending, how is the sustainability of the city addressed in your um, story? So keep going until you've um, mapped your journey. Then it will be time to draft. And in the process of drafting, there's a handout that um, goes with this video series that you'll be able to look at some of my top tips. But they are to relax and imagine the story in your mind. Turn on all your senses, run it like a movie. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? Try and write in kind of really full flowing sentences, maybe vary your sentence length a little. Keep your pen moving. Never worry about mistakes in a draft because these can be fixed up later when you revise. Stop every now and again and read your story aloud um, to keep your ideas flowing, but listen to how it's sounding. If you get stuck somewhere in here, stop and draw another mind map. Ask yourself, what if, and come up with some new ideas. Most importantly, remember there is no right or wrong way to tell a story because it's your story. Enjoy.